five seconds. <clears throat> Welcome to the uh, uh, the uh, computer security seminar from um, uh, Purdue University. Uh, and today's speaker is uh, uh, Ari uh, Takanen from uh, Kotonomicon, um, <clears throat> and he will speak on uh, robustness testing, black box testing for uh, for software uh, security. Okay. Ari, thank you. So, my focus here is uh, robustness testing, and reason for that is that Code Nomicon is a spin-off company from University of Oulu. Uh, University of Oulu has been researching uh, software security since around 1996, and has extremely narrow research focus in that sense that their interest area is on software flaws caused by software programming errors. So we call those implementation level security problems. So software security is the main topic. Codenomic on itself is a software company doing quality assurance tools. Contents of this presentation um, are as follows. I will start explaining software security. I know most of you already know that uh, the topic quite well, so I will go quite quickly through it. Then I will focus on security testing, different approaches of finding security problems proactively during product development, especially testing phase. Uh, then I will go into more reactive approach of software security, um, covering issues related to finding problems, reporting problems, getting those problems fixed, and getting those fixes uh, deployed into the real users of software. I will conclude with, with few comments afterwards. So starting from software security. Security as a topic is extremely wide, covering everything from viruses, uh, encryption, uh, authentication, uh, software security as a focus area from that area takes the smallest building blocks of networks of software, meaning uh, soft pieces of software actually doing, for example, communication, being responsible for uh, communicating with external world, being the building blocks of, uh, for example, uh, hardware devices, network routers, uh, actual business um, uh, perspectives of uh, networks. So software has different responsibilities and different uh, uh, risks associated to that. In general, um, software security flaws are always bugs in software. They can be resolved by fixing the software so that those bugs are eliminated. Um, any software flaw that is critical in that sense that it causes the software to crash, hang, uh, cause delays, uh, take more memory, have memory leaks. All inputs causing these kind of flaws are always security related. So if you analyze any software development project, bug database, uh, from security perspective, all critical flaws are always security flaws. Because the difference between quality assurance people and security people is that a quality pro problem in software becomes security problem if it's known by someone else outside that organization. Un until that time, it's a quality problem in, in a software, and it can be prioritized according to standard bug prioritization principles. Some vendors prioritize security problems as a one own category. But usually, they are just critical flaws. They have to be fixed as soon as possible, as, especially fast if someone else knows about the triggers, how they can be actually uh, misused. Um, any software flaw 
well, the typical um, reason why people are motivated in getting rid of them is that you can deny service. Um, as security researchers, uh, many people start analyzing what other error modes you have in relation with security flaws. But considering those from developer's perspective, it doesn't matter. You have a flaw in software which can be used to enter, to take control of system, to modify data, to eavesdrop data. Uh, and if you eliminate those flaws as early as possible during the software lifecycle, you save money. Not only because of losing money, because of losing data, losing uh, public image, pu public, uh, like, well, everyone knows what people think about some companies products you, you stop trusting the technology you stop trusting these software manufacturers because of security problems and when you start eliminating these problems you have to decide whether you go for reactive tools or proactive tools whether you prepare for the worst or whether you start investing in actually fixing the problems during programming phase uh, following secure programming practices, in testing, in uh, different risk equations, um, just preparing for the losses. In the past, um, especially at the turn of the millennium, uh, there, for some weird reason, became a trend of finding and reporting problems in software publicly. So. Every time someone found a bug, a security problem in software, for some weird reason, they wanted to publish it. They wanted to get fame out of that problem. Um, so the value in that also was that people became more aware of these problems. Before that, there were only few people who know, knew about security problems, what were the actual technical issues behind them, and also, Becoming aware of different security problem categories uh, enables engineers to learn from mistakes, not only made by themselves, but others as well. But from security perspective, if someone knows about a security problem, they can always misuse it. It doesn't require you to have the actual exploit or source code to the problem. It only, it's only a matter of minutes or hours or days that someone can always find what the problem actually was and create exploits for that, or worms or viruses to exploit those problems. Most of these problems are because of programming errors, simple mistakes made by programmers during the uh, software development. If you look at different categorizations for software flaws, security-related software flaws, um, there really isn't a consensus on how to categorize them. Many people try to categorize them on failure mo based on failure modes or exploitability or different kind of categorizations for the attacks themselves. Um, but the most important issue here, for example, in this, this example of our statistic, is that configuration errors, design errors, as a category are quite small compared to the rest. So if you divide them into three major categories, uh, design errors um, are something between 16 to 30 percent, uh, configuration errors only in the range of 5 to 8, all the rest are implementation errors. They are made by programmers who don't, who were not aware of uh, the consequences of making that choice, either in a function they were using, a code construct they were using, or so on, or so on. Um, it's not improving either. So everyone knows what's happening to software, what's happening to processing power, 